راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن ومكارم الأخلاق ندرسها معا أدب وتربية على الإحسان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Continuing with the subject of al-rida to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a deed done by the heart part of Islamic education too and this act of worship which is an action that is done by the heart to be in that state of being pleased pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one's Lord pleased with the religion of Islam as the religion to be followed and pleased with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the final messenger of Allah we talked about that before and how to implement this in our life and this is the highest level of reward and pleasure that the people of Jannah in the hereafter they receive is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Jannah so the believers in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them that he's pleased with them if they would follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we talked about that in the different examples and the Nusus, some of it, some of the text mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to the subject. But briefly, inshallah ta'ala, in this class, we'll discuss the fruits of al-rida, the consequences, the outcome. What's the benefit that a person would receive as a result of having that act of worship in one's heart? Of course, the first and the most important matter is to establish the purpose of this life the ubudiyya to Allah. To be among those who fulfill their purpose of their life uh, is by being in the state of al-rida. And one of the early generations of al-Islam, he mentioned something very beautiful when someone asked him, how can a person reach that level of being pleased? As we heard before, he said, if a person is upon four principles, then he mentioned them when it comes to his relationship, his worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, that a person would be, would be saying with his heart, he's established upon this, in a'taytani qabilt. If you give me, O oh Allah, I'm pleased, I'm accepting whatever you give me. Whether you like it or you don't like it, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's beautiful. Wa in man radit. And if you deprive me, if you withhold something from me, I'm pleased with it. Wa in taraktani abad. And if you leave me, I'm in state of worship, worshiping you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa in da'utani. Ajabt, and if you invite me, if you call me, I would respond. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the believers to all matters of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for a person while in the state of worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another act or another benefit that a believer would receive is to have honor and dignity in oneself. When a person is always content, always pleased, uh, that means what? That means he's not humiliated to other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever comes uh, while he's taken the means in this worldly life, he does not humiliate himself. And whatever comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's pleased with it. And that's why it's very important to remember what Shaykh al-Islam al Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, that any maqdoor, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, there are two things, one before it and one after, two acts of worship. What's before it is at tawakkul ala Allah, and we'll talk about that. To rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one's heart, which is one of the highest levels of establishing the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once the matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees befalls the person, immediately he would have that state of a rida to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they have to be, a person has to prepare himself at all times. He's seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taking the means and already had set himself and decided that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, 
he's pleased with it. Uh, one of the benefits is a person would receive this barakah, these blessings in one's life, the barakah, the blessings in matters of provisions, the matters of uh, being content in, in this life, whatever calamity befalls or makes it uh, little, it belittles what people might exalt and exalt what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to exalt. So uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests someone with a calamity, for example, that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test him, to extract from him a certain act of worship of Allah, one of which is patience, one of which is to show whether that person is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not, whether a person understands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he wants from him. And we receive this when we look into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And also that uh, one of the early generations of Islam when he said, whoever is pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for him, his life will be a pleasant one. And whoever has contentment, his eyes will have its comfort. One of the great benefits is to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is always the case when it comes to these actions that is done by one's heart. And that's why the dhikr and the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that we say every morning, every evening, three times. And in one of the narrations, the Prophet والسلام, he said to Abu Sa'id al Khudri, he said to him, Ya Abu Sa'id, man radiya billahi rabba. وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا وجبت له الجنة Whoever is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his Lord and with the religion of Islam as his religion and with Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as his prophet the Jannah وجبت that means becomes for him by necessity Why? Because the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, his promise is the truth and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers the, one of the great benefits also that a person, which is the greatest of all, that a person would attain the pleasure of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those who are pleased with him. So there's a very easy and a simple way to test ourselves. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us or not? Just ask yourself a question. Are you pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? If you are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what that means as we mentioned it before, Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed upon you, you're pleased with that. And when it comes to the religion of Islam, you're pleased with that. You're pleased with the religion of Islam, with every hukm, with every, with every matter, with every ruling. Right? And you're pleased with the Prophet وسلم, being your messenger to follow the messenger. وسلم. If you're upon that, then this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's pleased with those who have these types of qualities. And that's why... Never to miss. This is the effect of knowledge. Never to miss in the morning and in the evening to say it three times. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said that whoever says in the morning and in the evening, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيَّ The hadith says, إِلَّا كَانَ حَقًّا عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُرْضِيَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be make him, he would make him pleased in the day of al qiyam And the wordings of the hadith, illa kana haqqan ala Allah. And haqqan ala Allah literally means that it's the right upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that servant that he will be pleased. And of course, when it comes to the right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that upon himself subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way from his in'am and at tafaddul from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the believers, not that someone forced Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just simple matter, but it's not just some lip service. It's a conviction that a person is upon. And that's why if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with people, he would test them, he would try them. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطَ Whoever is pleased as a result of the test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him. And whoever detests and is in state of uh, opposing the qadr and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one of the means to attain the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, when he uh, mentioned the slave of the dinar and the slave of the dirham and the slave of the qatifa and the khamila and so on in the famous hadith, someone that is enslaved to, to the materialistic things of this world, what's the sign of that person? إِنْ أُعْطِيَ رَضِي وَإِنْ لَمْ يُعْطَ سَخِطْ If he's given from the worldly matters, he will be pleased. He's content. He would say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon me and so on. 
And if he's, something has been withheld from him, he's deprived from something, he's tested, he would sakhid, that means he becomes angry. And he'd say, why this is happening to me, why I'm this and that. So the believers, they prepare themselves at all times, whether it's something that they like or something that they don't like, they're always instead of being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all beautiful. There's no exception whatsoever. Human beings, they do evil things and good things, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His actions are all beautiful. And part of that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forgiveness of the sins, whoever hears the mu'adhan, uh, and then after that, he repeats after the adhan, and then after that says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, raditu billahi rabbah wa bil-islam medina wa muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya, ghufira lahu dhambu, his sins will be forgiven. As the Prophet والسلام, said, great rewards for simple words to be said, but it's coming from a heart that has the conviction and the belief and the certainty of what is being said. And that's why all khayr, all goodness comes as a result of that. And that's why it's a choice whether a person choose to be always pleased or a person choose to have a miserable life by not being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go through, whether a person like it or a person doesn't like it. And that's why the, the necessity of having this act of worship, which is being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being pleased with the deen of Islam. And uh, this is a higher level even than a sabr, which is a sabr is an, a mandatory thing. And this is what carries the person in their journey, in their steadfastness upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by always being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very easy and simple. And when we put things together and never to be contradicting when it comes to the purpose of our life, we are created on the face of earth not to enjoy and have fun and that's the end of it and then everybody dies. We're created for a reason, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this life, it is not upon what we desire. It is not ideal according to what we think. It's ideal according to what the purpose of this life is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perf perfected the creation of this universe, perfected the creation of the human beings, perfected the creation of this life with its miseries and good things and so on to fit perfectly the purpose of life. So for people to be pleased when they're being tested, not only when they're being given, for people to be patient when it requires for a person to be patient, these are beautiful acts of worship, would never be present unless there are struggles and trials and difficulties and so on. So that's why these are actions that as the salah and the zakah and so on, we have to establish these actions with our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are always pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attaining these means and we continue with more of these actions done by the heart next time if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن ومكارم الأخلاق ندرسها معا أدب وتربية على الإحسان بشرى ننازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان